Hey guys, Iron Mike here with Lobby Lakes Fly Fishing, and boy, it's been a little while. Um, but I'm super excited because number one, today was my last day of school, and I am off till the third, January third of the the new year. So super excited about that. And secondly, I am going fishing tomorrow. It's been, it seems like it's been forever. Took a little break during the hunting season, and you know, um, for the spawning trout and um, that's uh, last year I did a video on you know is it in my opinion is it okay to fish you know during the spawn pre-spawn post spawn all about that and before I head out tomorrow I just want to reiterate a few um, key points from that video to tell you things that I'm going to personally be looking for tomorrow um, number one is and this is probably the most important thing get get to know your stream prior to fishing I would say October through pretty much April because anybody all of the people that say you know give it up during the spawn if you actually want to um, you know be protective of those young fish because yeah they'll start spawning as early as late October but typically November into December now once you come to late December they're pretty much going to be off those reds. You still may see some spawning activity up into January. But here's the thing. Those eggs will lay in those spawning beds for about two months. And until, you know, they hatch out as sack fry. And then even after they, they hatch as their sack fry, they still stay in that gravel for probably two or three weeks until they start swimming up on their own and feeding on themselves. So that could actually take you into you know late March April if you if you have those late spawners and those late eggs being laid but anyhow here's my take on it and, and like I said it's just my take if you get to know your river and I'm gonna use the, the little Junietta for example you could fish that river clean from Tyrone even above Tyrone clean down to you know where it dumps into the Frankstown branch now so should you stay off that river it you know all winter uh, no no if you know your river you are going to know where those fish spawn and just just avoid those parts because if they're not engaged in a spawning activity it is 100 percent safe to catch and release those trout now if you're going down through and you come to a section where there's a bunch of reds I would say stay away from that because number one, they're they're going to have their reds where there's adequate gravel, um, and you should, especially this time of year, you will be able to identify those reds, and that's why I'm saying to know your river. If you walk that river anytime through November through December, just as a scouting mission, and and look, you're going to see those reds, and what you want to look for is light colored gravel, and they could be anywhere from I've seen them the size of a you know a softball clean up to the size of a kitchen table um, you're gonna be able to identify those reds now once you get into January and February a couple uh, times where the river raises up or gets churned up guess what's gonna happen you aren't gonna have any clue of where those reds are because it doesn't take long after they lay those eggs and get out of their spawning bed for those reds to get silted over so that's why I'm saying winter is not a great time to go exploring new streams because our wading and our boots are probably the worst thing that could happen to the reproduction of wild trout. But like I said, if you learn your river, it is 100% safe to fish during the spawn. Identify those spawning areas. and like it it might happen like you might have a five mile section of water and those fish all might come to those spawning grounds and it's it's only a half a mile long and that's where most of the, that's where the clean gravel is so that's where they're going to go to spawn and if you avoid that that's perfectly fine and you should actually avoid that clean up into april um if you're going to do it correctly so that's that's basically what i wanted to say um so tomorrow, uh, you know, self-filming, it's kind of hard to explain the, you, you know, the take that you're going to do on it and your setup and everything like that. But in the wintertime, 
those fish, and if I see, I want to side note here, if I see any reds tomorrow, I will put them on the video. Of course, it, 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 it's an injustice to cast at trout that are on reds if you really care about the future of, of brown trout. So what you want to do is if you're going up the stream and you, you happen to see reds, which the, the where I'm going tomorrow, I never saw much spawning. I can't say I didn't see any, but it certainly isn't what I consider a spawning ground. Um, there are certainly rivers that I know that there, I mean, you could see hundreds upon hundreds of reds, and that's what I, I try to avoid. But um, getting back to what I was saying, what I'm going to look for tomorrow is I find my best winter fishing in, in sometimes it's in the deep pool, sometimes at the at the tail outs sometimes they're even in the 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 faster water feeding but what you want to look for in the winter especially is if you have a fast run and those trout are hungry they're going to be in that because that's where all the food's coming down through but unlike the spring or into the late spring they're not usually in that super fast feeding okay they're conserving their energy and they're going to be off the side so what you want to look for is just those little a little bit slower moving water off of the fast water and that's where you're going to to find your trout or sometimes in a winter time if you see a deep pool I call it like a, a great indicator or bobber fishing pool which you might see tomorrow if I come to a spot like that I will certainly throw an indicator on because I'm 100 percent more confident in getting a nice long slow drift through that pool rather than tight lining if I can't reach it or I can't uh, control my drift speed as as well as I want to because not being able to cast out that far or get out that far I'm tossing an indicator on 100% of the time every day every day of the week 24 7 it doesn't matter um, I whatever I feel will get me the best drift is the method that I'm going to take and a lot of times that indicator will do nothing but slow your flies down and those less aggressive fish that are on the bottom even if your 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 flies are um, you know up in a water column a foot or so above because they're going to be on the bottom this time of the year if you have that nice slow drift they they'll often come up off the bottom and take that and uh, the indicator is a great way to go or you know I'm not saying you can't tight line that's probably what I'll do 90 percent of the the time tomorrow but um, basically I just wanted to open it up with I'm going fishing um, I can't take six months off and and not fish because of spawning trout but to sum this up I want you to study your water identify where those reds are and just because they get covered up you know in February or whatever doesn't mean it's safe to run out and wait everywhere in the river that's probably the most um, the, the time of the year to take the most caution when exploring that river wade cautiously if you know of a spot where um, you know there's there's a lot of reds just totally avoid that until you know those trout are at the age where they're out of that bed and they're up feeding on their own and like I said the latest ones should be out of there by early March so early March um, I would say you are pretty much to wade uh, wherever you want but um, please take caution in the uh, the winter months um, but it is certainly okay to fish and um, like I said it's not a great time to explore but get to know your river and I'm sorry for the long opening we will see you on the stream tomorrow and hopefully get a few fish to hand okay welcome just got out to the stream it's nice and early in the morning um, very quick gonna go over the setup got my syndicate two weight and Y2K I love using them this time of year up to a size 10 double trouble and um, going with the Rio Phipps um, nymphing line uh, I really like it especially in the winter time um, it stays pretty straight uh, the OPST gets uh, you know in, in the cold it seems to not produce as well for me anyhow is uh, you know the thin thin nymphing lines and then I have a five and a half foot gold leader to an indicate or I'm sorry a tippet ring and then from that tippet ring about uh, four feet to my double treble and then about a foot below that I have the Y2K. Let's see if we can't get any action. Alright! Yeah. 
first trap in a while. Put the, uh, I don't want to get my reel in the water, it's really chilly, huh? You see? Nice little brownie. Took the double trouble. Get them released. I like to do as quick as release possible in the winter time. There he goes. I'm going to pause that video, maybe set up in the same run, just so Ben doesn't have such long editing. So, all right, just release that fish. I'm going to give that run a few more casts, uh, really try to um, slow my drift down. The way I'm going to do that, instead of leaving my flies as much, I'm going to keep that rod tip out over so my line's, you know, more straight down. And believe it or not, that really slows down the drift. And, Sometimes that's what you need to do in the winter. So let's see if we can't get another one. Nice slow drift. Got another one. This one took the Y2K. Oh, it's a nicer fish. Nice little brown. One on each, one on each. There he is. That's two out of that run so far. I slowed that drift down, and that was a, the first uh, first drift with that, or first um, drift with the nice slow, you know, slowing that drift down. So, getting a little tangled up here. There we go. Back in. Okay, remember in the introduction I talked about you know a slow, whoop, long, longer hole and how I put an indicator on if I came to one. I'm trying to catch my flies here. So right where the red uh, and the gold meet on that five foot indicator or a leader indicator line, sorry, um, I put my indicator. Now this is a nice long tapering hole, slow, slower. Um, could be some fish in it though. So I want a nice long slow drift through here and I'm going to start on the inside seam and just keep working over. If you can see that. Nice slow drift. And there's a fish, first cast. It's a rainbow, that's strange. Pretty decent fish. Wow, pretty rainbow too. Um, took the Y two K. But yeah, he was uh oh he's a feisty one. There he is. Beautiful fish. Y2K right in the mouth. Let's get him released here. And that was the, uh, the first cast. I hope you can see that indicator go down. I'm not, not sure, but that's the importance of a slow drift in the winter. Okay, just released that rainbow. Barely got across this run at all. And sometimes when you find something like this, there can be several fishing in the winter time. So let's see. Still hitting that inside seam. A little glitch in the indicator. And there's another trout. Oh, this one's a little feisty. Ah, I think that was a decent fish. Might be a couple in here. I haven't even worked the far side yet. There's another one. Took the double trouble, it's another rainbow. Keep side pressure on them, it'll swim right up the stream. Feisty for the winter time here. He took the double trouble. Pretty fish, jeez. He took the double trouble. 
a little tangled up here. Let me get it out. But there he is. Nice rainbow. He's got double treble right in the side of his mouth. Maybe one last look here. That's a gorgeous fish. Alright. What I did is I took the took the indicator back off. Fast water on the edge, fast water on the right, little seam in the middle. See if we can't get one out of here. I'm gonna leave the camera here and work this run up. It looks pretty pretty decent. Try the lower end first. Is there anything in there? Snag. Say that that's the ideal that was the ideal winter time winter time run took the uh, size tenor double trouble there he is nice little brown um, right in between those two fast waters there's a soft seam and those fish should be laying in there I'm gonna uh, get this guy released there he goes move the camera a little bit. He was up towards the head of the run, so I'm going to take a couple more drifts up that way. Just a little more depth right in there. There we go. It's on the old y 2 care. Where? That's a brown. A little brownie. What's going on with this net? Got to come out with a better rigging system that's for sure full y2k action there he is there he goes salad on my wife okay for the winter time. Probably 10 fish, probably five or six on video. Oh, what a pretty fish. Why took care? Get that out of his mouth there. Oh man, is he hooked. Oh, almost dropped him. There he goes, with a plop. All right, been good, been good. Keep moving. All right, this is a very nice spot. Comes down off real fast water, kind of peters out into a deeper pool. I really expect there to be a few fish in here, um, this, especially this time of the year. So we'll run some nice slow drifts see if you can't get anything. Got me in some low shallow water down there. I'm just gonna walk right past the camera here, get him in the net. All tangled up here. Hook the Y2K. Okay. Let me show you a beautiful brown though. Very nice looking wintertime fish. You know what? I might get a picture with this one. I'm gonna put them in the water for the cover photo. So, um, be right back. 
Well, I took a snap to quick photo of that fish. Um, forgot to get the release on video. Sorry about that, Benny. I know how you like the, the release, but I'm going to stay in this run, see if we can't get another one. That was the first, first drift through, so we'll see. double trouble I don't know if I'm getting down in that run so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Y2K off and put a little waltz on just so it sinks a little faster um, get this guy released I'm gonna snap that Y2K off put a waltz on and see if I have any luck with that Good old muskrat nymph. There's a little muskrat right in the corner of his mouth. Awesome that. Um, that might actually close out the, the video, but um, like I said um, in earlier, there he is, there he goes, earlier in the opening I had mentioned, uh, you know, about watching for spawning grounds. This, this, I didn't see any spawning beds, not meaning there's not a couple in here that aren't sealed it over, but this typically isn't a, a good spawning ground, so. Hope you enjoyed. End up catching 12, 15 fish in that range. Uh, only been out for about, I don't know, got out a little bit early, but the sun came up right away. And sun and super clear water makes it a little bit difficult. But all in all, what a great day of winter fishing. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, best of luck on the water.